I'm so glad to see you today because I have a little surprise for you. Wait just a moment. Let's see. I wonder if you can tell what my surprise is already. Could you hear my chickies? Today, I brought these two friends with me and in a few minutes, We'll do a number story and we'll use the idea of our little chickies to help us think about it. But I just thought that you should meet them because they've been in my kitchen growing and pretty soon they'll be really big. And I just wanted to show them to you while they were small. All right, this one's Pansy and this one's Primrose. And we'll put them back in their little home for right now. And you and I'll get started with math today. So let me read the story that I've come up with. You know, they're only baby chickies now, but what happens to baby chickies? <laughs> so right, they will grow up to be hens. And when they become hens, they will lay eggs. So let's read our story. Pansy and Prim will each lay one egg per day. How many eggs? will they lay in one week? That's a little tricky, but guess what? I have some eggs right here to help us think about it. The first thing I want to ask you is, we've got this information. In one week, how many days are there in one week? Yes, that's right. There are seven days in one week. So how about I get some eggs out and pretend that they're pansies eggs. Will you count them with me? We have to count to seven because one egg for each day. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We can see that these are pansies eggs, right? Well, what about Prim? She's gonna lay her eggs too. How about we put her eggs down at the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, we're almost there. I'm gonna go this direction. Six, I know I'm covering up some of my words, aren't I? Seven. Seven eggs and seven more eggs. Let's think about how many that makes all together. Some of you might already have your doubles memorized and that is really good. If you don't know what seven plus seven is, tell your teacher what I can do or yell it to me. What can I do with the eggs to figure out seven plus seven? You got it. We're gonna make that friendly number 10, aren't we? So let's take Prim's eggs and add them together with Pansy's eggs until we get 10. All right, we have 10 eggs here. Count on with me. 10, we have to say our big number first, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. In one week, Pansy and Prim will give me 14 eggs to um, share with my family. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I want to bring over another math tool for you to look at. If you don't have these at home, you might consider getting them. They're called Cuisinaire rods and we can do so many mathematical things with them. When we look at the white cube, we want to give it a value how many would you call the white cube in comparison with the red cube? If you gave the white cube the value of one, then you and I are thinking alike. 
And you can see that if I put two together, I get the red. So I'm wondering if you can see, let's count. This equals one, this has a value of two, the light green three, the purple four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's test it. Let's find the one that equals six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's see if it actually has the value of six by using our little red pieces. We've already determined that a red piece equals two. So let's test it out. Two, four, six. See how that works? So each one of my colors has its own value. We're not gonna play with them a lot today. I wanted to introduce them. And we'll do um, a number bond here in a moment and then I'll just demonstrate it with our Cuisinaire rod so you can see how you can play with them at home. Alrighty, today we'll be talking about part, part, whole thinking and using some number bonds. So how about we start with thinking of my numbers. I wonder what numbers you think I'm thinking of. I'm going to put my whole, oh, I didn't draw a very round circle, did I? My whole there and my parts up here. Now it doesn't matter which direction I put my number bond. So how about I put this here and this here. We'd say this is a part and this is another part. And we want to find the whole. I'm gonna use my rods to help show that before we answer, even though I bet you already know. One, two, three, four, and five. I want to see what four and five make. Well, this one, I know, equals six. Not big enough. This one I know equals 10. Oh, two, too big. Oh, but look, we're only missing one. This is a 10, let me try this dark blue one. Oh, it's just right. Do you know what the value of that dark blue rod is? If you said nine, you got it. Five and four make nine. Now, we know that there are some equations that we could write from here too, or we can say that they're expressions if we don't write an equal sign. So I can say five plus four equals nine. And I can also flip that around because when we're doing addition, it doesn't matter which way our parts go. They can be interchangeable. So I can say four plus five equals nine. But what if I were to cover up one of our parts? What kind of a problem do you think we might be thinking about now? Yeah, how about we start with our whole and we say what we can take away and now we have to know what we're left with, the other part. You can think about these numbers as sort of like living in a home together. They're kind of like a little family. And so let's do it this way. What would my number expression be to show this number bond? Did you say nine minus five equals four. Now, if I can start to think about how those numbers relate to one another, it will over time help me get them memorized if you don't have them memorized yet. But we don't have to rush to the memorization. We can just keep working with our number bonds and with the kinds of math tools that help us think. Okay, so one of the things we talked about was when we put things together, we put our two parts together, that makes a whole, and then we know that we're talking about addition, right? And that's what this little symbol stands for, plus, putting them together. When we take it apart, we have, our, we have a whole and we're gonna take a part away from that. 
That's what this little symbol, sub, the subtraction symbol stands for. Let me say minus or subtract. So we just want to make sure that we know what our symbols stand for. The number equation I'm going to work on now with you relates directly to one that you'll do in your textbook. It's the first one. Um, I've got all kinds of vehicles here and while in your textbook they're just, you're just working with cars, I thought it might be a little more fun for us to work with all of our different kinds of vehicles. So let's start with part of our number bond. We won't put the whole thing together. Alrighty, what I'd like you to think about this time is what if we have eight, I better get them out. That's a little choo-choo train. This one's a bus, a little airplane. How many do I have so far? A car, there we go. Do I have eight yet? How many more do I need? That's right, I need three more. Let's use a boat. <laughs> oh, I don't have any yellow out there yet. So we've got five, let's count on six, seven, and eight. Great. Okay, well, let's think about eight and six and see what they make. We need some more vehicles, don't we? I wanna make sure that I put my vehicles in a place that you can see. I'm gonna put them right along here. So we've got, we're going to use six of them. So can you imagine in your mind what the um, layout of my vehicles will be, like how it will look to make six? I've got five there. I bet you know where I'm going to put the next one. Oh, there's two different places though. I could put it here or I could put it here, couldn't I? It doesn't matter. We've got eight and six. Now we're going to add those together. Well, hey, even though we have our math tools out, let's think about it a little bit with some of our mental math strategies too. And then we can check it in the end. So how about if I say, just like we have up here with our number bond, eight plus six, we know it's going to equal something, don't we? Do you remember what I'm always looking for? That friendly number, we love it, the number 10. Well, maybe I want to have this six help me make a 10 for my eight. So I gotta think about how many do I need to add to eight to get to 10? And then if I break six into a number bond with two, What's the other part? There we go. Can you think of the next step if we're trying to make 10? Yeah, we've got to show it, right? All right. So this is 10 and four more. Now let's do it up here. I am going to move two from my six, I've got my 10 and my four more. So eight plus six equals, let's loop these together, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's just like that. So Tay, you're going to continue to work like this and you're gonna be thinking about numbers and adding numbers and subtracting numbers. And I know you're going to have a good time, especially if you get some of these math tools out and use them at home. I can't wait to see you next time.